What's up, you guys? Nicolo Maserati here. Today, we are going to be talking about how to take your lighting from this to this. But before we get into it, let's run that intro. All right, guys, like I said, today we are going to be talking about how to set up lighting for your YouTube videos, short films or client work. All of the things that we're going to talk about in this video can be applied to things outside of YouTube as well. But before we get into all that, if you guys enjoy this type of content and want to see more, please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell so you can be notified every single time I upload a new video. All right, so we're going to break this down into three steps. First step is you're going to want to stop using natural light close the windows. Natural lighting is often harsh, hard to shape the way you want it, and can be pretty unpredictable because a cloud can move in front of the sun, completely changing the brightness of your scene. So before you do anything, close the windows, get rid of that natural light, we don't need it. The second step is to add a key light. For my key light, I use a Godox SL60 with a softbox and a grid set at about a 45 degree angle on my left side, about two feet above my eye level, angled down towards me. This sort of creates what's called a Rembrandt lighting, which is named after the famous Dutch painter who frequently used this lighting technique in a lot of his paintings. Rembrandt lighting is basically basically where one side of the face is fully lit and the other side has a partial shadow with a distinct triangle under the eye on the shadowed side. What this does is it adds depth to the subject's face but it also creates a little bit of a kind of moody look, which makes the overall image a lot more interesting. For my softbox, by using a grid, it allows me to shape the light the way I want it and keep it from spilling in the background. Third and final step is to add some practical lighting. Practical lighting is lighting that can be seen within your frame. Having practical lighting creates more depth and separation from your subject to your background. Again, what this is doing is making the scene more interesting and pleasing to look at. You can create practical lighting using lamps, candles, or computer monitors. And if you don't have any of those things, you can always just put a light behind you. Having practical lighting can add a lot to your scene. So I recommend no matter what you're filming, whether you're doing an interview or you're doing a YouTube video or whatever you're doing, if you can set up the scene to where you have some practical lighting behind you and you have your subject in focus, that's going to add more depth, more ambience, and just make the overall image more interesting to look at. There you have it. Those are the three steps to achieving a better lighting setup up for your YouTube videos, your interviews, or your client work. And really only using one light. I don't count the practical lighting in the background because it's already there anyway. I'm sure you guys have a candle or a lamp at home that you can put behind you when you're filming your YouTube videos. So I don't really count that as lighting, but with one light, you can achieve a really nice looking image. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video, you guys. If you did, please feel free to hit the like button below. Make sure you subscribe, and I'd love to hear what you think of this in the comments. See you guys in the next video.